In this video we're looking at how to create a time-lapse series of photos. We're going to be concentrating on the GoPro Hero 2 that I have here, um, although you can use many other cameras to create some time-lapse photos. And then uh, we'll look at editing and creating the actual time-lapse using iMovie. Okay, so let's start by having a look at the GoPro and making sure it's the settings are all correct. So you want to switch on the GoPro. Once it's switched on, you can see there that mine goes straight into uh, video mode. If I just focus the camera there, there we go. It's going straight into the video mode, which you could see by the, uh, the icon in the top corner. I've also got the LCD backpack installed here. So we're going to change it, we'll just go into the settings here, here we go, and once we're in the settings, we're going to come across to, there we go. So if we select this, this is the icon for your time lapse. So if we select this, we can see that we can set the time lapse at 0 0.5 seconds, 1 second, 2 seconds, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 30 and 60 seconds. Um, this is how the, the amount of time it will take to take the next image. So if I go back to... I'm going to set 2 seconds. Um, the longer your time lapse, obviously the longer you want to uh, set your time. The shorter your time lapse, it's better to uh, keep the number of seconds short. So I'm going to keep mine at two seconds here. So I'll select two seconds. And then we're going to exit. There we go. Now we want to go through our modes that you can see in the top corner. And we want to make sure it's in this mode. So as you can see in the top corner here, is a camera with a little timer icon. If you don't have the LCD, you'll see at the front here, the top corner, the camera with the little timer icon, and you'll see two seconds, which means uh, it will take two seconds between each photo. Now, as you can see, the battery power is at the bottom, and it's going to be taking the photos at 11 megapixel, which you can also see on the screen. Right, so I'm going to go away now, and uh, take some images in a time-lapse fashion and then we'll come back and uh, have a look at editing this and creating our actual time-lapse movie. Okay, so now we move across to our Mac. Um, I've recorded a short time-lapse of uh, some in-car footage, nothing exciting, but uh, it should be enough for this tutorial here. So I forgot to mention no matter which camera you use, as I'm using my GoPro here, you could be using any other camera to create your time-lapse photo events. Um, it's really good to use a Class 10 SD card. The faster the card, the better. Now, recording HD video only requires a Class 4 or a Class 6 card. It's always good to have a faster card for time-lapse because you're looking at 11 me megapixel, around 5 to 6 megabyte images being taken every two seconds or possibly less. So the faster card you have, the better. So I've been using a 10, a class 10 SanDisk Extreme card. It doesn't, the make or model of the card doesn't particularly matter. It's just that it's a, uh, it needs to be a class 10 card. So here's my class 10 card here. I'm going to insert it into the side of my MacBook Pro. And if we go into the card, as it pops up, we can see I've got my DCIM folder here, my GoPro folder, and here's all of my images taken from my time-lapse today. Um, if I just select a portion here, and we have a quick look, so we can see this is the inside of my car, and if I go through them, you can see a time-lapse beginning here. So, we're going to use all of this. What I'm going to do now is import all of these uh, images into iPhoto um, and then we'll move across to iMovie and uh, 
begin making our time lapse. Okay, so with all my photos now imported into iMovie successfully, um, I've op uh, iPhoto, I mean, sorry, I've opened iMovie here. I'm using version 11, which uh, may look familiar to a lot of you already. So with a new project created, um, I've got my project down here. I'm going to bear in mind I, I tend to work with the project down the bottom. So if it looks slightly different to you, it's probably because um, you may have the project up the top here with your all your events down the bottom. I tend to work the other way around. It's more similar to a uh, final, final cut um, and many other editing applications. So we click on this button here, this photo camera button, and that opens our photo inspector. And uh, just for quickness, I'm just going to select a few photos here. I won't select the whole lot because it will take too long to import. So uh, if I select a few photos here, we simply drag them into our project and it imports the photos into the project. Now there's a few bits and pieces we need to do once the uh, photos have all been imported and we'll go over them um, in less than a minute. We're almost there. So it, as the photos come into the project, it will add some effects in automatically. So, And we're not really after any of these special effects. As the photos come in, you'll see the check marks next to the, fo the photos down here. And that just means that the photos are being used in the current project. So if we close this, if I scrub through the timeline, you'll probably notice the photos moving around all over the place and that's the Ken Burns effect. Now firstly we need to get rid of this Ken Burns effect um, because it's not going to make our time lapse look very nice. So select a photo, command and A on your keyboard will select all photos and then you'll on any of these photos you'll get this little drop down. If we select that and we'll go to cropping, Ken Burns and rotation. Okay, with that selected, we come up to our window here and we can either click fit or crop, but we want we don't want to select Ken Burns. So here I'm going to select crop and I'm going to increase this slightly. And we'll get rid of some of the roof of the, the car here and we'll we'll come down to here. There we go, I'm happy with that. And then we'll click done. So that'll crop everything down to there. So as you as we can see now it's looking a lot nicer and now that we've got rid of that Ken Burns cropping effect. However if I play through this as it is, so I scroll back towards the beginning and I play through this as it is, as you can see it's taking far too long between each image um, and that's going to make our time lapse very slow, very boring. So what we want to do, again with all of the images selected, so select one, command and A to select all. We click the little drop down arrow again and we'll go to clip adjustments. And in this window here, we're going to highlight the four seconds. Now each clip duration is four seconds at the moment. And we're going to change that to, let's say 0 0.2. And this is where you experiment to find the best uh, effect for yourself for your own time lapse and then click on this to apply it to all the images in the actual project and then we click done and if I go back to the project now if we go back to the beginning and play through the project you can see it's going through nice and quick that's uh, much better for a time lapse and as I said you can experiment with the the timings as and how you wish and uh, that's your time lapse in iMovie 11. So uh, you can experiment with this uh, in regards to the transitions in between the beginning and the end titles and so on. But uh, that is the gist of your time lapse in iMovie 11. Okay, so and another way to actually create a time lapse, if you don't want to go through the hassle of going through iMovie, um, removing the Ken Burns effect, uh, the timing between all the photos and so on. So everything we've just done, basically, there is a small app called Time Lapse Assembler, as you can see here. Now, um, all you need to do is put all of your photos into a folder, 
as I've done here. So I've got a time lapse folder here. If I double click on that, we can see it's got all of my photos within it as we saw earlier on. Now I then use this and I choose the source directory. So here's the time lapse folder which I just showed. And we'll click open. So source directory goes into there. Choose the codec, which I'll leave at H264. You choose your frame rate, or frame rate, sorry, and again I'll leave that at 30. And you basically leave everything else as it is and click encode. Now what this will do, we'll give it a name, so I'll just give it time lapse, let's say, and it'll save it into the time lapse folder. Click save. And what this will do is basically put all of the images together and create the time lapse for you. And then uh, the result will be a movie, a .mov file, which you can just import into iMovie or Final Cut and edit as you wish, or just upload straight to the internet um, and so on. So we'll give this a moment to encode and then we'll come back and uh, see how it's got. Okay, so we're almost there now. Bear in mind the encoding takes as long as the time lapse you are creating. So if you have tons of photos, obviously the encoding will take longer. Um, also, bear in mind that this is a free application. You can easily download from the internet completely free. Um, although they do, do not state it runs on Lion. Um, I'm running Lion at the moment and obviously it's working fine. So it does run on Lion and Snow Leopard. Um, and probably earlier versions of the Mac operating system. So we've finished here. So if we now quit Time Lapse Assembler and we'll open the folder where we created the movie, scroll down to the bottom, and here we go. So it's created our Time Lapse movie here. So if I take a quick look at that, there we go. So as you can see, it's uh, created the Time Lapse movie. That's probably slightly lot were faster than I would have wanted it but uh, for long movies that's uh, perfectly fine and you can now use this and import it into iMovie or any other editing application perfectly fine and edit as usual so uh, a nice quick way of creating your time-lapse movies excellent quick way of doing it so that was time-lapse assembler for the Mac so I've how, I hope you found this uh, video useful in creating uh, time lapses. That's two different ways you create your time lapse there on the Mac operating system. So uh, get out there, get creating some time lapses, and uh, get creative.